Welcome to Remolations. We're your hosts. I'm Mindy. And I'm Brooke. Remolations is a dream interpretation podcast where we read listeners' dreams. From nightmares to the just plain bizarre, join us as we give you our comedic interpretation of your fucked up REM cycle. Today I'm reading a dream from Sarah that's fantastically adventurous. It's about witches, God, and a bag of fruit. (laughs) We also have catnaps about shady grandmas, (laughs) random paper routes, stolen bicycles, and a pocket-sized fortune teller. Ooh. And stick around to the end where I share the story of comedian Mike Verbigula and his sleepwalking antics. And Can't wait for that. Yeah, so stick around <laughs> and hear about his sleepwalking journey and the movie he made about it. Oh, yes. All right, Bestie, put on your sleepwalking shoes and let's get started. Woo! Good. I like that. That was the perfect woo, too. But not too that loud. The, it was the perfect woo. See, I didn't think about it. I didn't the day of the perfect woo. The day of the perfect woo. Mark it down. It is what day? June eighth, eighth, twenty twenty-three. Perfect woo. <laughs> so you know my beautiful, my beautiful book. I love. So her. I was like in a Virgo mood yesterday, <laughs> and so I wrote down all of our episodes and title names. You did not. And then, and I then love it. I love more. And then whether we had more or less listens than the previous week. Mindy, what? <laughs> and then. You were I having into, a Virgo day. <laughs> I was having a Virgo day. You know how it goes. I love every and, second of this. And then I was uh, wanted to document all of our hashtags and our topics. So now we have a list of like, well, I know it's just on paper. So it's probably much care. better. I don't care. I love paper. <laughs> I do too. So I was it like, looks, oh, and it looks like a ledger, you know, like an accounting, yeah. like an accounting yeah. ledger. <laughs> oh, in it. episode 40, we asked what Cameron Diaz dreamed. See, I don't still remember. I mean, no. still haven't heard that bitch. That's good. Oh my God. Hi, hi. gorgeous. Hi, hi. What's that it, you drinking? What's that you drinking? <laughs> <laughs> well, since it is earlier in the day today when we're recording, not like it's stopping you, I noticed, but no, I, have I'm, a, I'm, I have a white cloth, so <laughs> I'm having Kool Aid cherry, yeah, black cherry. Oh, mm-hmm. so refreshing for summertime. I love Kool Aid in the summertime. I don't know why. It's just you sure you don't have any hit. vodka in that Kool Aid? I've never put vodka in it, but it's a good idea. I think it would probably taste pretty good. Vodka good and Kool Aid. Vodka and anything really tastes. Good. <laughs> Is that but the truth? It is. So, should we get started? We should. We shall. We shall. Okay. This dream is from Sarah, and she's from New York City. How does she spell Sarah, by the way? Thank you for asking. S-A-R-A. Okay. We got the no H, no H on the end? No H on the end. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't want to, like, alienate anybody. I mean, even no. though I've told people. We also people, love Sarah's with H's on the end. <laughs> We love all Sarahs. (laughs) Indeed. (laughs) It was a beautiful moonlit night, and I was walking along a hillside path close to where my childhood home is located in Trinidad. I now live in the U.S. Oh, wow. Okay, cool. I walked along merrily, enjoying the beauty of the moon glow on the landscape. I have a feeling this is going to (laughs) turn... I mean... Why? Why would you... I just got this little (laughs) inkling here that... Perhaps it's not going to stay as lovely. Maybe that's the end of the dream. Let's talk about it. (laughs) Let's analyze it. It was great. It was great. Thank you, Sarah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Suddenly, my Mm -hmm. awareness perked up, and I knew that something was approaching. Okay. I stopped, looked, and listened, and a buzzing (laughs) sort of noise reached my ear. Is that something like stop, drop, and roll? Stop, drop, and roll. (laughs) Look. Listen. (laughs) (laughs) I saw that something was flying toward me, but it was a distance away, and I could not determine what it was. Mm. It came closer and closer, and when I could see it clearly, I was shocked. I'm nervous. <laughs> a giant, like, insect, it, I hope not. It, 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 it was a witch on a broom. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I'm so glad it was a witch. I mean, <laughs> I'll take a witch over a giant insect any day. <laughs> 
Well, you know what? I, I, I don't know how I feel about that right now, but okay. I'll think uh, about that. <laughs> okay, a witch okay. on a broom wearing a hat like you would see on witches in storybooks and like very Halloween-ish. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And she was making a beeline straight for me. I tried to move, but it seemed that my feet were rooted to the ground. Mm -hmm. Before she could slam into me, I ducked and at the same time began to call out to God. He was my only defense at the time. (laughs) (laughs) Well, sometimes that happens. Sometimes it's all you got to do is just throw your hope to God. They don't die. (laughs) You just cross your fingers. She, of course, missed her mark and I recognized who she was. Oh, I like this. My feet regained movement, and I began to run as fast as they could carry me. I was looking for a place of shelter. She continued her attack, and each time she tried to slam into me, I avoided. She was shouting obscenities in that (laughs) high-pitched old hag voice. She's like the Wicked Witch of Trinidad. She's like, I'll get you, my pretty, you little bitch. I'll send you to the bago. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Who sent you what? <laughs> it's Trinidad and Tobago or like oh, two. T- t- yeah, I got you now. <laughs> Sorry. I thought you said Ooh. you'd send a bagel. I'm like, that sounds good. You're like, yeah, can you send me one? <laughs> George asked me a bagel. <laughs> it's not Trinidad and Bagel, Brooke. No, I know. No, that's just what my ears heard because I'm hungry. <laughs> I'm hungry too. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, she was shouting obscenities. Yep. Hag voice glaring at me and showing off on that broom. <laughs> <laughs> I like hag voice. I like hag, old hag voice. Mm -hmm. So I continued to just run and pray. Mm -hmm. Possible shelter or protection was still far away from where I was. And I asked, oh, God, how am I going to fight this witch with no weapon? Please help me, Lord. Before the words were out of my mouth, it felt like there was something heavy in my hand. It was a bag of fruit. (laughs) Well, it's not quite a bag of bagels. But I'll take I a bag like, of fruit. I like now, fruit. It says here's a, fruits, so okay, plural. So, oh, so what would you consider the most dangerous fruit to have in a satchel <laughs> as defense? Oh, uh, like an apple or something hard, like a pineapple. Oh, pineapples are good because they're pointy. They <laughs> they're kind of hurt. Two cantaloupes, yeah. watermelons. I go with the watermelons. Or, but, yeah, you know, then good. it gets heavy, so you got to kind of figure out the balance. The agility versus the, the strength of the yes, fruit. Yes, exactly. Your, in your fruit satchel. What in your fruit satchel? Your weaponized fruit satchel. Your weaponized fruit satchel. <laughs> and God. And God, God, don't forget. Don't forget. <laughs> How would you have gotten that satchel? You know? Magic. Don't, don't it's a for- miracle. It's a miracle. It's a miracle fruit satchel. <laughs> so that is the weapon God gave me, and I was not about to let her get the best of me. I stopped, no. twisted the top of the bag for a good grip, <laughs> and waited for the next assault. Yes. <laughs> she came at me full speed, but this time I did not duck. Stepping aside... Sarah. I let her have it with my bag of fruits, and she almost (laughs) fell off the broom. She came again, shrieking at the top of her voice, and I let her have it again. This time, she fell off the broom, and I beat the hell out of her with my weapon. Then, poof, she disappeared. And then I woke up. Way to go, Sarah. Sarah, yes. I know. I was like, get it, girl. clapping for the end. (laughs) No, the end was good. (laughs) That is... I'm I'm excited to hear what you have to say about the interpretation of the stream because that is a doozy. It's a doozy, and I don't know where to get like stuck in because there are lots of different <laughs> things. So I'll just kind of bring up some stuff and we'll discuss. Sound good? Sounds great. So it starts out, you know, I feel like dreams always start out great, right? Yeah, usually <laughs> it shows us what the goal is, kind of at the beginning, something mm-hmm. that better place to reach, as searching for that peace and. It yeah. also shows us how quickly our lives can be turned upside down. <laughs> like when you dream, like it's like everything's oh, great. Yeah. I until mean, that damn hag witch until shows Until that up. hag witch. The wicked witch of Trinidad. The wicked witch of bitch. Trinidad. Hate her. <laughs> mean. She's just an old hag with her hag voice. Goddamn hag. <laughs> so I thought you would like the part. I thought you'd be very proud because we've been hearing from you about knowing your surroundings and being aware of what your gut mm-hmm. is telling you. And she felt that something wasn't right. And she used that intuition to be on the lookout for danger. It heightened her yep. awareness. So 
maybe maybe she's listening and paying attention. It's coming through Mm -hmm. in her dreams. (laughs) Okay. Which attacks and and (laughs) which attacks with W-I-T-C-H. Yes. Which attacks and her avoiding the attacks. That part. She kicks ass. That part was great. She didn't give up. She, in the end, she wins. She but wins. the avoidance of the confrontation, I think, like to survive. survive like, she's in yeah. survival mode. She is. Like, no, she couldn't beat the witch. She didn't have any weapons until she got her <laughs> satchel of fruits. <laughs> <laughs> she can't beat a witch. Funny. You can't beat a witch, Barry. You can't. <laughs> it's too hard. So what is, there's something pretty unrelenting about this. She keeps yeah. coming, but she keeps like still kind of making her way out of the situation. I feel like witches, the appearance, especially the one in this dream, like the Halloween cartoonish yeah, yeah. looking one is pointy hat. Yeah. Universally recognized, you know, it's a symbol of fear and power and evil and all that stuff. But they've been represented this way in lore, literature, pop culture, everything. And even historically, there are witches in the world. And of course, yep. we all know that they're beautiful, wonderful, loving witches. Sure. But they catch the bad rap from history <laughs> of how yeah. witches have been treated. But Oh, yeah. Let's not even go into the Salem no, witch trials we don't or, need... you know, that kind of history of the U.S. No, mm-hmm. no it's not great. We'll skip over that. We'll no. skip that. <laughs> I did look up, though, some meetings of witches in dreams. And, Sarah, okay. it's not necessarily great, but I know you're going to get not, through it. <laughs> you're like, it's not great, Sarah. Well, dreams about witches mean that this part's good. Dream, let's start with the good and the bad. Let's, let's, yes, okay, okay. Good. Dreams about witches mean that you possess resilience and strength hmm. that help you confront challenges head on. And we did see that at the end of the dream. Mm-hmm. But it can also mean you're struggling <laughs> to express your power. So you need to look for ways oh. that you can do this, which I thought was really interesting. It kind of fit with the dream. I mean, it does make sense because if you think of witches, they can't really just go around flaunt, flaunt, flaunt. <laughs> Flaunting their power. You know, it's not like, it's not, this isn't hocus pocus, people. You can't just like go what? around and like zap little kids. You got to keep it under wraps. Right? I mean, just be so, cool, man. Just be cool. So it does make sense that that can represent, you know. Yeah. A power struggle and just mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm, I get that. However, like the reputation, it can also re- represent some serious troubles in your life. So, Sarah, sorry. <laughs> but to each, like we say each week, each their own, this might mean something completely different. But the significance of a witch on a broom or a witch flying <laughs> is not good. <laughs> <laughs> More bad news, Sarah. <laughs> More bad news for you. Most of the times, a witch's broomstick is helpful for spiritual teleportation. So seeing this in a dream could mean that you're about to experience like a sudden turnaround in your business or whatever okay. the struggle is. Or well, Yeah. And, and obviously, Sarah has some sort of religious background because yeah. she's mm-hmm. even said, like, Pray I didn't have God. anything except for God to yeah. help me. So that's interesting. Yeah. And this kind of fits with the dream, too. Like you were saying, kind of the avoidance. A witch dream can also signify that you're on the verge of experience an abrupt change in your career. So it could be maybe she's afraid of that and she's not ready for that. And Mm -hmm. But also if you're being chased, which is another thing that she had in her dream, negative energy. Sorry, Sarah. (laughs) Negative energy (laughs) is coming your way. I'm not laughing. No, no. (laughs) I'm not laughing at you, Sarah. I'm just trying. Okay, to get through this. So you have to be really careful at this time in your life now. Just Hmm, be aware. That's what she was trying to do in the dream. So I think that that does make sense. It does. She's trying to be aware of her surroundings. Something bad came to her. And then again, at the end, she got she defeated it. So being aware kind of helped her overall. Absolutely. Be ready for those bad things. Yeah. And then we also have the classic stuck to the ground (laughs) <laughs> such yeah. a classic dream but for a good reason it's kind of like that epitome of feeling trapped and completely helpless again what is she running from you know but she's getting stuck so what's holding her back there's just you know how we always want to know what is it sarah what yeah. is it that's bothering <laughs> you because we can only guesstimate but definitely running from something she's definitely slowed down by something I think there's a lot she's got to figure out. But like you said, she does have God and she does have prayer and she calls on God for protection. And Mm -hmm. guess what? 
it fucking worked. <laughs> God delivered. God delivered. So God's like, don't worry, Sarah. I got you some fruit. It's all good, girl. I got gotcha. you. You're good. You're good. I was out of like um, bricks, but I'm going to send you <laughs> some fruits and I know you'll do well. <laughs> it's it's make, like making lemon out of lemonade. Wait, no, no okay. the other way. Making lemonades out of lemon. <laughs> <laughs> making See? Kool-Aid out of a packet. <laughs> mm, speaking of Kool-Aid, let me take a little Kool-Aid break. Ooh, Kool-Aid, do, 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 white do, do. club break. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing she talked about was even though she felt like she was kind of starting to get her footing and she was able to run again, she still can't find shelter. She said it was still really far away. She finally freed herself, but she's still not safe. Yeah. And like whatever her issue is, I feel like for her, maybe in real life, it, she probably feels something like taking two steps forward, one step back. It yeah. seems like uh, she's trying so, so many hard. Things in life so many like things. That, right? Yeah. And she, uh, any path of life is not just a straight linear line up. It is. God damn. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> You're right. Can we just get that? I don't God? want this. I just want <laughs> the roller coaster of oh. life. Yeah. No, it does make sense. Satchel of fruit, as Mindy calls this- it. The bag of fruit. <laughs> Oh, Lord. I. Oh, Lord. Please. Are you calling on Lord? I'm calling on God. Oh, Lord. Please help me understand the satchel of fruit. And no, if- close, close your eyes and meditate for one okay. minute. Namaste. Namaste. See if he will speak to you and tell you what the fruit was for. Any ideas? No, I think, he, ju- I think he just dropped some fruit off at my door. <laughs> That sounded like melons. I think it, I think it's big. Or oranges. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hey, do you want to know a fun fact about oranges? Of course I do, because <laughs> as I woke up this morning, I was like, you know what I need to learn today? A fun fact about an orange. Well, if you're beating someone with a bag of fruits, people use oranges like... Um, they don't leave marks for whatever reason. I don't know, like, when you're... <laughs> right. Yeah, okay. oranges, like, I've... <laughs> I am so, like giving you the most quizzical look and I'm looking I know. at you with quizzes in my eyes again because I know. <laughs> well, say you're beating somebody and you don't want any marks to show up. Or where, <laughs> where would you learn this fact from? Oh, I think it's I mean TV, obviously. Well, it's gotta <laughs> be true then. But no, I watched it on some it was not like a TV sh- it was like a documentary or something. Maybe about prisons. I'm not sure. Well, I th- oh, okay. I can't. That rem- does make sense. I can't remember. But well, now I think we know what kind of fruit she it, that <laughs> she, Sarah had because she doesn't want to leave a mark. No, she's got. She just wants to take care of the situation. Well, I think she might want to leave a mark because she said say she beat the hell out of her at the end. <laughs> <laughs> coconuts. Then we'll go with coconuts. Oh, that's Wait, are, you know what? Are they a fruit. It's a nut. Co- it's a nut. <laughs> it says coconut in the name, Mindy. Shut you up. know coconuts are like one of the most dangerous things on like tropical vacations. Sure. Like more people die from coconuts like falling out of the tree and hitting their head than like almost anything you could experience on a tropical vacation. Because yeah. they're so high up. Makes sense. They're so well, high up. Yeah. So when they fall and they're hard. The, yeah. I mean, the, unfortunately, God only de- delivered a fruit satchel, not a nut satchel, I don't know, which sounds I dirty. mean, dear Lord, dear Lord, please bring me a nut satchel. <laughs> <laughs> dirty. Okay. So, not the most conventional weapon, but it's also one of my favorites that I've ever heard yes, of. Agreed. And it actually turns out to be very effective. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but not only effective, so fruit can symbolize something that is offering you refreshment or new life, new kinds of fulfillment. So as the yep. dream kind of, you can see it was negative and it kind of starts to take a turn at the end. Like now there's maybe mm-hmm. better symbols in her dream as the product of a process of development in like seeds and growing fruit mm-hmm. may symbolize your true self, the product of a process of integrating Basically, into your consciousness, 
And then more and more of the contents of your unconscious. So she can kind of try to figure out what's going on in her brain right Maybe now. Maybe it's her brain telling her, her subconscious telling her, you need to take a stand finally on something, stand, right? right? Like, take a stand. You know what? You've got the power. The power's within you and this fruit satchel. So take <laughs> it into your hands. Don't forget it, though. The power is you, but also the satchel. <laughs> right. The, it does help. And then just beat the shit out of this wicked witch. Goddamn witch. Yeah. So if we're going to end on a good note... Ripe fruit, for example, is associated with lush and rewarding experiences Mm. and rich with promise for the future. So, yay, good stuff. I finally get to say a good good thing for Sarah. I just find it funny. It's like this is a saying for a reason. But this dream just made me think of like quite literally you work hard and you keep fighting to enjoy the fruits of your labor. You know, like. Oh, Brooke. Nice. Nice, isn't it? Nice. But you're right. Did God you, damn, she good. defeats the witch, that real bitch. She was not nice, did not mm-hmm. like her. Just step off. Step, step off, bro. Step off, witch. <laughs> not today, witch. Not today, witch. <laughs> not today, witch, bitch. <laughs> great job on the interpretation and great dream. I, it was, I was entertained. Thank you so much, Sarah. Yes, thanks, Sarah, for submitting the dream. Bestie, we're always having fun on this podcast. And if you haven't checked it out yet, last week we did part one of our collaboration with Mark Safe. And this week we just released part two. So if you want to see the video and all that hilarity with your eyeballs, you can go to (laughs) revelations.com slash support and join our sleepover squad. Oh, it was so much fun, you guys. It, it was uh, the best time, and that's just one of the ways you can support the show. But by going to revelations.com slash support, you can also submit dreams or just send us an email and say hi. And, Brooke, you know what? We're really official now <gasps> because we have a P.O. box. Holy shit. I know. That. We do. Woo! So, We've made no. it to the top. We've made it to the top. So, so <laughs> drop us an email, send a dream, and then let us know if you want a sticker, because we will drop one in the mail for you. Mm, that are from our P.O. box. That's right. <laughs> in Wasco, Illinois. <laughs> that sounds sexy. It is the tiniest little post office that smells like... Oh, God. Oh. It smells like, like old wood... <laughs> Like, it smells like a, a like building musty, that's... Like musty? Like musty. Yeah, yeah musty. It's, it's our favorite musty new P.O. box. Mm, so, I love it already. I can't wait say, to eat it. Say hi. We'll send you some stickers, besties. <laughs> thank you for everything you do, and thank you for supporting the show. Yeah, now we can keep bringing you fun, special episodes like this that you're just going to have a great time listening or watching. Brooke, that brings us to the part of the show which we call Catnaps. What? Yay. Yeah, I know. It's a surprise, right? <laughs> this is where we read short, sweet little dreams from our listeners. We don't interpret them. We just have fun and get through a bunch of them. So we do. may I get started? You may. All right. This first cat nap comes from Nicholas from New Berlin, Wisconsin. Ooh. And it's, here you go, Brooke. It's N-I-K-O-L-A-S, <gasps> Nicholas. Oh, love it. <laughs> <laughs> This one he had titled School and Basketball. Okay. I'm going back to high school in my dream. I walk to campus, and in order to get into the school, I need to have my ID scanned. I go to my first class, and they have us fill out one of those career quizzes that says what you should do for a job. Have you ever done one of those? I don't don't think we did. did. That wasn't something we did, but I would have loved to find out because I still can't figure it out. (laughs) It'd be like, you should be a podcaster, even though they didn't exist. Yeah. You're like, somehow we think you should be something called a podcaster. In the (laughs) future, you'll know what it means. (laughs) (laughs) But instead of telling me what job I should apply for, it was used to determine what classes I should be in. Okay. Okay. So it's like a guidance counselor, yeah. Scantron. Well, do you really have that many choices? It's right, high school, high right? Like you, you might have like one choice this semester, like a free. <laughs> like, do you want to take do you want art choir or, or home choir? Ed? You know, but other than that, it's like you take math, you take English, you, it's whatever yeah. science. So Nicholas says, as I'm filling it out, I'm thinking how I'm glad I'm able to start over academically. Mm. Oh, okay, maybe that's something. <laughs> sure. Then I'm at basketball tryouts. We were, we, nope. Mindy, read the words that are on the page. <laughs> That's all you got to do, babe. 
read the words on the page. <laughs> Sorry. I just slow down. I like how you told yourself that, Mindy. <laughs> and you had a voice like a... Like, Mandy. Internal dialogue. That's my internal dialogue. <laughs> it was very menacing. <laughs> we don't really do much. Just fill up some mini fridges with drinks for us all to sell. The coach. <laughs> That's my kind of basketball team. I can be on that team. The coach then guides us around the perimeter of the gym, where there are all these fridges, like you'd see for milk and eggs, etc. at the grocery store. They were stocked full of many different products. Ooh. Each one has a year in which the products won't be available until. <laughs> Damn it. They're all like on a wait list. <laughs> from as early as <laughs> from as early as 2039 Jesus. to the late 2050s. What are these things? And then I woke up. <laughs> Like what kind of what kind of food can stay around and stay good? I mean, I guess twenty thirty nine is not that far off, um, but still, it's far. I mean, that's pretty much that's about let's say about forty years. No, twenty thirty nine is uh, yeah ten twenty years. Let's see, not that that not that far. Not Wait, twenty. Yes, twenty thirty nine I'll... minus twenty twenty. <laughs> I'm gonna do the math here. It's less. 20, it's less 20. than twenty. It's probably like fifteen, around sixteen. Six. Just One. think, it's 16 years. Okay, well, I... I... So, it is really not that far away, 16 years, but, you know... Well, why the... would you want to be on a wait list? What is so goddamn special that you I have don't to know. wait 20 and years, 16 mil- you years? Know, you know what it is? It's that damn fruit from God. Oh, God is putting the fruit satchels down, like, 20 years apart from each other. Yeah, it's like the Great Plague, except it's for, like... you know how he... <laughs> it, at the end of time, he just gives us all these gifts. and you Every know, 20 besides... years, he presents a satchel of fruits. <laughs> yep. So thank you, Nicholas, <laughs> for sharing your bizarre dream. Yeah, that was a good one. That was definitely a good one. This one I like just because it mentions where I went to school, or I should say just lived for a little while. This is Jordan from Sacramento. Mm-hmm. Once I dreamed that I had woken up in Tucson, Arizona. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's where I used to live with no idea. She woke up there many times. I did wake up there many, many times, which is good because that's where I should have been waking up. Yep. (laughs) Where I live. (laughs) Right. With no idea how I got there. I had a car full of newspapers to deliver and somehow I just delivered them. And then I took a plane back to Georgia and no one knew how it had happened. Next, I was with a guy who had just gotten out of jail. And there, oh, no. there is a little sub note here. In fact, he was in jail for DUI while I dreamed this. So he okay. must have that from real life. You? Yeah. Okay. And he was asking me to walk with him to buy cigarettes. I could not because everyone was calling me to find out about my waking up in Tucson. And then I woke up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That's exhausting. It's like- exhausting. <laughs> You're like the fake wake, right? We call it the fake wake to the wake up wake. and then like deliver some newspapers. And everyone's like, dude, where were you? <laughs> You're like, I don't... Delivering newspapers in Tucson. And I mean, how I many don't... people get newspapers I, anymore? I don't even know how to describe it any clearer for you guys. I had to I deliver the news. I woke up in Tucson. <laughs> I delivered the newspapers and I flew back to Georgia. What's Typical so confusing? Morning. I wonder if he has to do that every day at like 4 a.m. Um. Does he like have Groundhog's Day where he forgets every day about his paper route? And he's like, damn it. Why did I choose a paper route in Tucson? (laughs) He seemed to know where all the houses were. That is helpful. All right. This next dream comes from Nora, and Nora's from Denver, Colorado. Okay, this is a recurring dream. Okay. I keep having recurring dreams. I'm cheating on my partner. Uh Uh-oh. The first couple times I have brushed it off, but these dreams have been making me feel like crap all day afterwards. Mm-hmm. I can get that. Oh, yeah. So I've been in a relationship for years, and my partner and I are really happy together. No issues with infidelity on either end at all. Hmm. However, for the past few months, I've dreamt that I am cheating on my partner. I am always enjoying myself in these dreams and then feeling massively guilty afterwards. Ugh, that's the worst. I usually don't seem to remember the fact that I am in a relationship until things have already gone too far. And I try to rationalize it in the dream, but I always know that I messed up and that my partner is going to be devastated. Oh. Last uh, night's... I know. This one's I, breaking my heart. I feel bad because it's like, 
you can't control that you're dreaming that. And if no. everything's great in your relationship, it makes it even harder to comprehend. Yes. Oh. Yes. Ugh. Last night in the dream, I was cheating by kissing my best friend, someone that I am not at all attracted to romantically. Hmm. Why do I keep having these dreams? Oh, Nora. My heart's breaking. It is, but thank you for writing it in because it is a good point. And we've said this before. You can't control your dreams. Just because you're having a cheating dream doesn't mean you mm -hmm. want to cheat no. or your partner is cheating. It's one of those things that the mind works in mysterious ways. And maybe you feel like you're letting – and I'm going to get into a little bit of interpretation okay. here <laughs> just because I feel bad for Nora. I just want to say one thing. Um, maybe you feel like you're letting someone in their life down not necessarily, you know, it could be family, it could be something mm -hmm. happening at work, but you feel like you've let someone down and that's coming across as the most painful way it can for you, which it would be cheating on your partner. Oh, that's really smart. Yeah, that's yeah. coming but across girl, as like your biggest stress nightmare. Like that yeah. would be your yeah. the worst thing is to yep. lose your partner that you love. So, wow. And then you, yeah, to, to have that morning guilt. Oh, do you have one for us? I do. Okay. I don't know why I picked this one. This is Jake, and he's from Austin. Someone had stolen my bicycle, and I finally found it in a jungle. Taken oh. apart, and the pieces rusted. Man, you know, they take those bikes to those junkyards, and they tear them apart and sell them, <laughs> sell them for parts. Scrap it. Oh, yeah, man. That's why you need those bicycles, man. You can get some good money for those scrap parts. You, you can, perhaps. <laughs> And especially in the jungle. In the jungle, right. You kind of need your bike to be put together. <laughs> <laughs> it's not easy to ride a bike in a jungle anyways, so no. I don't know why there. No, I don't get it, but that's all right, Jake. We still love you. <laughs> then I saw a plastic beehive. When I touched it, a swarm of bees flew out over my head, and suddenly there was a stampede. Don't that Wait, don't, don't, don't poke a beehive. I don't that's... care if it's plastic or not. No. <laughs> that's not a good idea. Tap, tap. No. I wouldn't like it. Oh, boy. You're not Winnie the Pooh. No, don't do it. It's not safe. <laughs> now, here we go, more God. Then came the voice of God saying, oh. and all the animals ran, but for the lion who was asleep and the tiger who for once in his life just didn't give a fuck. <laughs> and then I woke God up. Said, God said the word fuck? Well, maybe shit, but it's all in... Oh, it, oh, oh, it's start out. Yes. I gotcha. So, so a four-letter four letter swear word. Four so, because mm -hmm. this, I like the lion was sleeping and the tiger just didn't give a fuck to join the nope. stampede. I don't, <laughs> I feel like that some days. I don't like, care. I want to be the tiger. I just don't feel like it. Some days you don't. I'm not taking but that you, on today. I hope you recovered your bicycle. I hope so too. <laughs> well, on the same note, this is kind of, it's kind of similar. This one comes from Susie, and I don't know where Susie's from. She didn't say, but Susie says, I've had a recurring dream where my great-grandma sets me up to have the transmission stolen out of my car. Oh, no. <laughs> Grandma? <laughs> so then I'm trapped and I have to work on her farm. Oh, <laughs> then I woke that's up. terrible. <laughs> Grandma, no. <laughs> Gra Grandma, no. stop dealing with those thugs. <laughs> Does she work in bikes, too? <laughs> she, that's probably it. <laughs> she has a side hustle with bikes. All the all the farm workers have like cars that won't start, and there they are in the in the fields, and they're get, you know reaping all that fruit in. And Grandma's just stealing transmissions <laughs> and bicycles. And in turn, she's getting free help for her farm because she keeps not them cool, at, mm -hmm. not good, not good, Jima. <laughs> all right. Oh, this is funny. Because didn't the first guy, Jordan? Yeah, he talked about Georgia. This is Velma. She's from Atlanta. Wonder oh, okay. if they know each other. Probably. Probably. Small state. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was having an amazing evening in Chastain Park in Atlanta. Okay. First, the Atlanta Braves. And she put in parentheses, a baseball team. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Actually, I might know that. Brooke may not. <laughs> I know that one. Okay. <laughs> Good. They actually won. Oh, yay. Fleetwood Mac. All right. <laughs> Yes. Fleetwood Mac had a concert featuring Lindsey Buckingham, who had then recently quit. Ugh, God, that, oh, they have so much trouble in that band, but that, they're so good. <laughs> they're I know. so good. So good. Uh, 
people were jumping on stage and the crowd was booing them because they all just wanted to hear the music. <laughs> and then I woke up. But Velma says this dream was partly prolific because a year later, the Atlanta Braves became a winning team. And seven yeah. years later, Lindsey Buckingham rejoined Fleetwood Mac. <laughs> That's pushing it a little bit as uh, yeah, prophetic, we'll, but... Yeah, we'll go. Are they still touring? I don't know. Cause I thought I thought I just heard they are doing something in Vegas. They have a tempestuous me... relationship with each other. But Christine McVie just died, mm. um, like, last year, I believe. Or maybe even earlier this year. So she... Would not yeah, be there. They, they are going to be playing a tour in. They're going to Las Vegas. Well, oh, like um, a residency somewhere. Yeah, I think it's like a residency in Las Vegas. So totally down. For I would. That I trip. would go to that. Okay, mm-hmm. let's think about Vegas. a trip. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Making notes. <laughs> Making notes. <laughs> well, I got a short and sweet one here from Leslie, and she's from Nashville, Tennessee. Ooh, fun, fun. One time, I had a dream where I was in a gang initiation. Hmm. Well, was it the the farm gang? It might have been the stealing farm transmissions. Gang. Like Granny's, like we got to beat you into this gang. <laughs> Maybe because in order to be in this gang, I had to kill Barney the dinosaur. Oh no! That's it. That's all she wrote. That's a tough one. I mean, I'm not. I mean, I'm not like a Barney fan, but no, you know, not at all. obviously, I feel like this was something maybe from childhood that was <laughs> I feel so. Yeah, was like right. I cannot do it like maybe barney's my favorite right no. yeah i get that <laughs> <laughs> oh, i mean right i mean usually it's like a rival gang member but you know, no no if you want to be in this farm gang you gotta steal a transmission and kill barney <laughs> and disassemble this bike yes and give grandma some fruit <laughs> <laughs> evil grandma what a dick <laughs> She just told a grandma a dick. I'm sorry. She was. But she is. Yeah, it's, she, it's true. I call him as I truth. seize him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is Felix from Mississippi. Okay. I was sitting on a pipeline above a pond full of turtles and alligators. Okay. Mm, not the choice where I want to sit, but that's okay. I had a <laughs> The turtle's fine. Alligators, not so much. <laughs> well, I just, you know, don't know why you'd sit on a pipe in the first place. No. Okay. But- I had the skin knee and the blood was dripping down and making the alligators go crazy. But somehow I was never afraid. They were launching themselves out of the water up toward me, but they couldn't reach me. Then, out of nowhere, it was one of the fucking turtles, all in caps, that pushed me off the pipeline. And then I woke up. <laughs> I was really, just, really slowly. Like, like maybe. Little he, head comes out. He, had to walk all the way up to that pipeline and have enough power to push a human being off. <laughs> you, that's a, a human being off. That's a maybe it's like a tortoise or a sea turtle. <laughs> like, mm, those are big, but you might see that coming. Yeah, you might see that coming. Yeah. But I you don't know. Say. Like, geez, Louise, I don't know what happened after that when he w- fell into the water. But best of luck wow. to you, Felix. <laughs> Swim fast. Swim fast. All right. Well, I got one more for you, uh, if that's okay. Th- it is from my dream journal. Oh, yay! <laughs> it's funny because you've been saying how you've been dreaming like crazy lately, and I've been in my crazy dreaming mode yeah. every night. I wonder what's dreams. happening. I don't know. I don't know. Something in the stars. So uh, as I was flipping through here, because like I said, I've been dreaming a lot lately, and I didn't know which one I was going to read. And it's funny because even... This one I had uh, May 30th. So, like, not even that long ago. No. no. And I I forgot about it until I started reading it. I'm like, I totally... Which is so... It, it's so important why you write your down in your dreams because I That's completely forgot I had this. And it's going to be gold, isn't it? I just know no, it. it's It's going to be gold. You ready for this? Mm-hmm. So, again, forgive me because this is my sloppy morning handwriting. So, but here we Wait, go. Wait, can I ask you a quick question? Yeah. Are there drawings? Is there a picture? Yes. Yes, sir. <laughs> I knew you were going to ask it. And there is one drawing in this. Okay. Okay. Uh, Yeah. Please proceed. (laughs) Starts. Brooke and I were visiting a city. Yay! I'm in your dream. You're in this one, girl. Okay. A city. Just a a, a city. city. I don't know where we are. We're visiting some city. Okay. We had a 5 p.m. flight back home. 
but wanted to stop off at a little shop near the airport on the way. Okay. <laughs> it's a mix between a bookstore and an antique shop. Mm-hmm. I'm browsing and I find a modern day fortune teller. Ooh. Now let me explain this magical fortune teller to you. Oh, God. <laughs> it was the size of a credit card. <laughs> and keep it in your purse. <laughs> the fortune teller. Mm-hmm. You keep it in your purse. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a person. Yeah. I'm just I should clarify I that. Know, I'm picturing this tiny person and you just no. put, a, put him or her or whatever in your purse. And when you need a fortune... You're like, Esmeralda. Excuse me, my man. <laughs> Esmeralda. <laughs> of course. So l- that, I'm glad you said that because let me clarify. Okay. <laughs> it was like a device. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Like a credit card size little. Um, like an do- iPod. Do hickey. Yep. <laughs> Back when iPods existed. Like yeah. when they existed. <laughs> to open it, you flicked your wrist and it would open up to a scene that was then interpreted into your fortune. Oh. It was much like tarot cards. Okay. So you flicked your wrist and it made it opened up. Okay. And then it made a scene. And then that scene was like your fortune. L- uh, let me show you a picture. <laughs> let me describe it first for our best okay. who are not okay. part of our sleepover squad. If you want to see this picture, uh, a couple dollars a month, you can uh, join it and see all oh, my great art. Like, oh, it's fantastic. Like, so it looked like a... Cl- like a little metal clutch. Okay. It was gold and silver on the outside and like had like a little design. Okay. It had like a little, um, you know, like a clutches have like a little slide button on top. Yes. So you can open it. You yeah. push it to open it. And then attached to that, there was this pink handle on a, so there's a string coming off <laughs> and there was this pink ribbed handle. Okay. Which doesn't make any sense. Okay. <laughs> and so then when you flipped it open, there was a scene. So let me here show this, okay. uh, hold this up for Brooke and Brooke. Um. <laughs> Oh, it was like a, it's like a window <laughs> where this, it's sunny outside and there's a lovely tree. So that's the scene. Yeah. So, so it, it just kind of pops up. It just opens to like a, a, a three by three, kind of unfolds, make, it unfolds oh, bigger than the original. Oh, I see. The device yeah. turns into the image. Yes. Mm-hmm. It doesn't, it's yep. not like projecting it. Exactly. Okay. I got it. I'm with you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> The, the wallet part was metal on the outside, which I explained. When you flip it open, it was like laminated paper. So it's like a, it's like almost like unfolding a note. Okay, okay? got it. Except for it's like laminated. Okay, and it's enclosed God in this bless. little metal cloth. Uh, you wouldn't be having a le- legit dream if it wasn't laminated. <laughs> no, and if it wasn't this detailed. <laughs> you then close it by folding it over itself, and then it would snap back together like it was a magnet. So it kind of snapped back into this little credit card thing, and then okay. that was your fortune you just saw. Okay. Okay. Did you have? Do you have to buy this device, or do you pay like a dollar to use the device? Yeah, it's like something you could buy. Oh, something you, you could buy at the store. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow! So personal um, fortune teller all yeah. time. Okay. I open it and I close it multiple times. Each time I do, it would show me a different scene. Okay. Okay. I figured this was some sort of gimmick, uh, like a gimmick toy, and how the magnets connected the paper would change almost like you know how like a magic tricks like you flip the you fold it one way and it would show you one scene you fold something in another way yeah so it almost seemed like gimmicky it's to like me. an illusion like, yeah 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 like, like it's uh, not really yeah. making new scenes <laughs> so even my dream i'm skeptical of this i love that <laughs> i love that you're skeptical in your own dream <laughs> <laughs> right but upon closer inspection i couldn't figure it out and it just seemed to be true magic okay I thought my little sister, who, by the way, is like in her 30s now, but in my dream, she was in middle school. Okay. So I dreamed my little sister, Kelly. But you were your age? Yes. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) For some reason. So I figured she would love it and she could show it off to all of her friends in middle school. Cool. So I picked one up out of a large pile and I tell Brooke about how cool it is. Oh, this toy is so cool. And I thought the fans of our podcast would think it's cool, too. This is so, really like existential, Mindy. <laughs> like you're bringing in the podcast on the podcast. I know. I know. It's so weird. Wow. <laughs> so we decided we should buy them all and sell them at our shows. Oh, smart. Right? Yeah. I know. Let's write sweet dreams bitches on them in Sharpie. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Brooke is now talking to the shop owner. Oh, making a deal. <laughs> 
Brooke really isn't wanting to buy anything, oh. but the owner insists she has to show her an antique that she would love. Oh. So Brooke starts to follow her, and I follow Brooke. <laughs> I don't have any idea where this is going. No clue. I now realize the time is 4 p.m., and we only have an hour till our flight. Oh, no. That's not good. No. <laughs> we were walking all over the store and eventually over top of a kitchen. We had to, like, walk over these, like, plywood pieces that were rotted. And so when you look down, you could see the kitchen. Well, this is dangerous. Is, is there no Where other way? Us? Is there no other way? I don't want to see this antique that badly. <laughs> so the owner walks over the rotted plywood that looks like it's going to break and makes it across fine. She tells us to follow. Oh, no. Brooke, be- <laughs> Brooke begins... <laughs> to follow her um, oh no i know but what's now gonna happen. i have a flashback to the fortune teller <gasps> i saw brooke was going to be stuck here in miami and i think i oh so we were in miami. miami okay we finally figured out the city <laughs> cool i guess i didn't realize that till now <laughs> so now we know and so Brooke, so Brooke was going to be stuck here in Miami, and I think she wouldn't be able to get back home for four months. What? And then in parentheses, I wrote August, which I don't know why. I must have known. Uh, well, you couldn't get back. Till I, I wouldn't be back till August for some reason. I tell Brooke to stop because I think she's going to fall through the plywood and get severely hurt. Oh, and I'd be in a hospital in recovery for, for like yep. four months. Exactly. After some resistance. <laughs> Why am I being such a dick in this stream? I don't want to buy anything. Don't you tell me where to walk. (laughs) After some resistance, she agrees to not walk across the rotted plywood. for you, Mindy. (laughs) Since since we have to catch our flight anyway. (laughs) Oh, so (laughs) you rationalized it. Fine, I guess. Since we have to catch our flight, (laughs) I I won't. I guess. (laughs) Hey, at least I didn't have to buy anything. (laughs) <laughs> nope. So then we go back to the display box with all of the fortune tellers to grab them all to buy them. And we see they've been sold out. <gasps> the large display box is now empty. She led us astray and they got sold out. Mm. Except for the one I'm holding in my hand. <gasps> Dine and, and now dash. I, <laughs> and now, <laughs> Antique. Antique. A- a- antique and... It doesn't, it doesn't work. Really rhyme. No. <laughs> I now realize the pink plastic handle is broken. <gasps> I search all under the racks for more, thinking they one might have spilled out, but there are none. Mm. And then I woke up. Mindy, I have so many Crazy questions. Dream. I know we won't talk about it, but could you get how often could you use this? Did it operate? As many times. Like, so you could it, have a, a reading all, 17 times a day. Yeah, that's what it seemed like. And was it like paired to you or could you give it to someone else and it could work for them too as long as they were holding it? It didn't seem paired. I was the only one who did it, but it felt like whoever had it could see the fortune. Okay, because that's why I was just wondering why you needed so many of them. Well, I just sell, sell oh, to sell them at the show. Yeah, to so sell them oh, at the show. God damn it! I want all of our each and every one of our bestie to have one of these fortune tellers because obviously they work. What do you? What would you call it? You called it something already, didn't you? No. Did I? I just called it a fortune teller, I thought. Oh, well, we've got to come up with something better um, than that for our shows. It, it would be for called... For Tune Into Revelations. Teller. <laughs> <laughs> I think that, yeah, it just rolls off the tongue. Brooke. It does for Tune In. For Tune In. <laughs> yep. Got it. Got it. Anyways. Check mark. Um, but I'm sorry, Bestie, I didn't get any more, and we will not be selling them at our shows. So. Mm. But maybe we can invent something. Yeah, we'll try. We'll work on it. It'll be like a yeah. bar of soap that we, like, hollow out and wrap it up and say it's, like, the fortune teller device. Sure. You know. Yeah, we'll figure it. it. We'll, we'll figure it yeah, out. We'll, we'll, let's have a meeting about that next week. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> there are no wrong answers in brainstorming, Mindy. <laughs> right. Nope, there are not. <laughs> Anyway, I thought that was a good one to close it on. It, it was featured my best great. friend, so oh, <laughs> weird, and weird, it, weird. And I was an asshole kind of in your dream, moody, moody little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> well, you didn't get anything. I think you're just 
You're ready to fly home. I, I was, maybe. Maybe we'd been there for a long time. But you saved my life. Thank you. I would mwah, always mwah, mwah. Mwah. <laughs> By the way, if you feel anything dangerous upcoming in your life, take a step back. Mm-hmm. I just feel like maybe a little premonition here that maybe just, maybe you need to be aware of things. Watch where you walk. Watch where you step. I say, I don't care what anyone taunts you with or he tries to get you to come towards them. You should never walk on rotting wood or thin ice. <laughs> Both bad ideas. Bad, bad ideas. So I, these topics sometimes find themselves to me in weird ways. This one, there was a listicle that popped up in my feed that said, celebrity sleepwalkers. Ooh, and I, was like, Ooh, I well, like it. I love a good listicle. <laughs> I'm in. It was from uh, like Crow River Media, which is, you know, obviously one of those yeah. s- lots of ads. And, but it did have some interesting things. And I took off from that and like research. <laughs> Mindy just goes. <laughs> she's like, I, here it is. Let's go here to a thousand. Yeah. <laughs> the, the funny thing is, is the, the, the article writer from for this listicle, <laughs> you'll get a kick out of his name. I mean, you know how it has the author feel, right? Yes. So it says June 5th, 2023. Yeah, got it. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, it's not a real name because it says Bang Showbiz. Bang Showbiz? <laughs> like, that's not a real author. Like, I know I'm dumb enough to click on this clickbait, but Bang <laughs> Show, you could come up with a better name than Bang Showbiz. I, I don't know. I kind of like it. It sounds like <laughs> a stripper name. Bang Showbiz. On stage next. <laughs> Tete. If you want to see the scenery, you got to pay the greenery. <laughs> um, yeah, but if Bang, if you're a real person, I do apologize. No, oh, you should. That's but rude, Mindy. Okay. <laughs> so anyways, so I get down halfway down this list and I find the story about Mike Berbigula. And if you don't, are you familiar? I'm with not. Not okay. off the top of my head. So he's an actor, a director, writer, mostly known as a comedian. Um, he was in Orange is the New Black. Oh, okay. He was also in A Man Called Otto, Trainwreck, Fault in Our Stars. So he's been in a bunch of things. My favorite thing he's ever been in, however, Ooh. is the Taylor Swift anti-hero video. Oh, well, shocking. <laughs> yeah. Duh. Fun fact. So that is my favorite piece of work he's ever done. Mm-hmm. So Mike was born in Shrewsbury, Massachusetts. He was the youngest of four kids. Okay. <laughs> he attended an all-boys Catholic school. An all-boys? No. Oh, God. I mean, I wouldn't mind that. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but could you imagine even an all-girls, too? Oh. I wouldn't want... I, even as a girl, I'd rather not be by all-girls. No, like, exactly. I wouldn't either. Well, no, 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 no. I'd want, I'd be like, can I just pretend to be a boy? <laughs> So at 16, he was inspired by Stephen Wright to begin writing jokes. So he oh, kind I of love had this. Stephen Wright. Yeah. So he had this like young kind of bug to, you know, be a comedian. He grew up and went to Georgetown University where he mm-hmm. performed in a bunch of improv groups and really honed his craft. Sure. Eventually, he got a job as an intern on the Conan O'Brien show in 1997. Nice. You know, I love I- me some Coco. Oh, he needs a friend. Um, (laughs) Great podcast. This comedy career started taking off. So at this time, he's becoming more popular, and he ended up creating a one-man show called Sleepwalk With Me. Why does that sound so familiar? Okay, so I'm going to get into it a little bit. It was a a, it straddled stand-up and theater, and it was an off-Broadway show at the Bleecker Street Theater in New York. Okay. So, you know, beyond that, he was on, you know, uh, David Letterman. But I want to kind of focus on this college time real quick. Okay. So there's a YouTube video I found. I'll put a link in the show notes that he kind of describes this whole idea of how he came up with the story Sleepwalk With Me. Spoiler alert, it's about him. (laughs) (laughs) It's a real spoiler. Yeah, right. (laughs) So he's 44. He's only a couple years older than you and I. Mm -hmm. Um, So in 1998, he was a sophomore in college. And he was dating this girl named Abby at the time. Okay. And, you know, coming from a conservative Catholic household, his parents didn't know that him and Abby were, you know, living together at the time. Mm. So when his parents came to visit, he 
moved they moved all of her stuff to an extra bedroom and made it look like she didn't live there. Wow, that serious. Yeah. That, and yeah. they and he's in college? Yeah. <laughs> okay. My- Come on. I don't care how strict your household is. In college, I yeah. think you're old enough to live with yeah. somebody and so, you know, at this time, he was lying to his parents and it was causing him a lot of anxiety about this. And we know anxiety can easily start tripping some sleep disorders. Mm-hmm. And that's when his sleepwalking began. Oh, boy. So he had this recurring dream of an insect, uh, like an insect like jackal that was in his what? bedroom, just hovering over his bed. An, an insect, insect jackal? jackal, you know. Yeah. They breed well together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Ew. Each time he had this dream, he would jump out of their bed and he'd strike a karate pose. And he's like, I never took karate, so I looked like the karate kid, like that kind of pose. <laughs> like just like, really what you would expect uh, a karate pose to look like. <laughs> I'm going to like Daniel's son's gonna kick the ass out of this uh, insect son. jack <laughs> jackal. This insect jackal's got his numbers Nothing. up. He's got something coming his way. <laughs> he then says, he would yell out, Abby, there's a jackal in the room. <laughs> and his girlfriend ended up getting so used to it, she would just like talk him down while she was sleeping. She'd be like, there's no jackal. Go back to sleep. <laughs> there's no jackal. <laughs> and so he says, I'd lie down, but I still knew there was a jackal hovering right over the bed and it was like going to swoop down and kill us. So he's like, okay, I'll go back to bed. Yeah, like I'll sleep but real soundly as this <laughs> insect jackal hovers over me about ready to kill me. <laughs> so at this time, he realized this kind of dangerous and his girlfriend suggests maybe he should see a doctor. Mm-hmm. Spoiler alert, he doesn't. <laughs> Lots of spoiler alerts in this story. <laughs> So after they graduated, they moved to New York. They lived in Brooklyn in a tiny one-bedroom apartment with two cats, and they said a puffy couch. Oh, that sounds lovely to me. (laughs) And you know how it is, like, right when you're out of college, and he's a comedian, obviously, so he's, like, probably not making any money. Oh, no. And they bought a new TiVo, and that was, like, the big, big expense. They were so excited about it. Remember TiVo? Oh, yeah. Where it'd be like, did you ever have one? Boop, 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 bonk. Oh, yeah, like yeah. You, no, I never had one, but I had a friend who did, and I remember the mm-hmm. noises like when you'd fast yep. forward or rewind, and or if something went Jones. wrong. Yep. Cool, so man. They were very excited about their TiVo. But even though they had a lovely new TiVo, they had some rough patches in their relationship after moving and living together. They thought it would like kind of help the relationship. So it was kind of a hard spot for him. He was mm-hmm. kind of feeling anxious once again. One night in their new apartment, he had a dream. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you his story. Okay. One night, I had a dream that I was in the Olympics hmm. in some sort of arbitrary event like dust bustering. <laughs> I would not win that event. <laughs> <laughs> no. You're like, is it does with chores? I am no. not the winner. Mm-mm. They told me I had gotten third place and I climbed up on the third place podium. Oh, congrats. And then he made a funny kid. He's like, even in my dreams, I don't win. <laughs> I'm like, oh, no. that's pretty good. <laughs> But then the Olympic judge approached me and told me, you actually got second place. (gasps) So I moved over to the second place podium and it started wobbling Uh oh, and wobbling. (laughs) And then I woke up as I was falling off the top of one of our bookcases in our living room. Oh, no. (gasps) Bookcases are high. (laughs) How did he get up there? He even thought he was climbing the podium to get his medal. But like, I mean, did he bring a stool or he just no free climb the bookcase? <laughs> he says, I landed on top of our TiVo, which was sat on hardwood, and it broke to pieces. Oh, no. <laughs> Abby woke me up in the morning and said, Michael, what happened to the TiVo? I just said, I got second place. I'm really sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this girl's a saint. Oh, right. <laughs> Broke my fucking TiVo. <laughs> Gotta save up all over again. Bestie, also, you probably, most of you might not know what a TiVo is. Was, oh, yes, thank you. It was kind of like a first DVR kind of out there. Mm-hmm. Like you'd hook it to your TV and you could record programs. It's like kind of the first like live shows. Live shows and like yeah. rewatch them. And like there wasn't anything like that back then. So this TV digital. Was, so it was digital. It wasn't like a, a VCR. No, tape not a, like a to, VCR like, where you it. tape it. Yeah, it's yeah. like a modern day DVR would record whatever you set. 
but it was like the first. Yeah, it was. Okay, well, we got the broken TiVo. Um, so <laughs> my question is, did he take this as a sign to go to the doctor now, Brooke? Mm, I would hope he did, but I don't think so. You are correct. He <laughs> bought a book instead. It was called The Promise of Sleep by Dr. Dement. Dement? <laughs> Dr. Dement. Oh, sounds scary. It gave all the sleep tips that we have talked about on the podcast, like, you know, remove devices from your right. room, don't watch TV, you know, go to bed at the same time. So he's reading it and he's like, OK. And he did take note from the book that that explained how anxiety can be a major heightening factor for people and sleep disorders. Mm -hmm. Mike said he was experiencing the height of his anxiety in his life at this point in his time. He was 23. Oh, his God. girlfriend wanted to get married. And he felt kind of claustrophobic in the relationship. 23 is his most stressful time of his life. I'm like, oh, dude. Well, at that time, you probably would think that. Yeah, no, I get, I get yeah. it. I get it. <laughs> so eventually, during this time, him and his girlfriend broke up. She started seeing someone new, and he started dating a girl named Jenny. Okay. That's, and spoiler alert, now it's his wife. So. Oh, this Okay. This is the most spoiler alerts you've ever given. I know. It's like a spoiler <laughs> alert filled episode. <laughs> Jenny was not okay with the jackal, by the way. So if once he started having these jackal dreams again, she's like, you need to see a doctor. See, maybe Jenny was what he needed. Abby wasn't like yeah, pushing I mean, him. She suggested it. But when he didn't do it, I'd be like, bitch, get to the doctor. There's jackals and no, all this crazy bookcases. Thank God. So here's another example that happened. One night, him and Jenny fell asleep while watching the movie Fight Club. <gasps> Great movie. Top. Love it. Love it. They were watching a scene. There's a scene in the movie where Brad Pitt holds down Edward Norton's hand and he's going to pour acid on it. Do you recall? Mm, yep. <laughs> but as he's dreaming, Brad Pitt's there and he's holding Mike's hand down. <gasps> so Mike jumps out of bed and sprints down the hall, throwing a chest of drawers <gasps> in his wake. Oh trying my. to escape Brad Pitt. I wouldn't try that hard to escape Brad I'd Pitt, be like, to be honest. Go ahead. <laughs> what else do you want to do? <laughs> uh, but he was not he was not in the feeling the acid. Um <laughs> so he ran into the hallway, hit the elevator button. Like <laughs> he's go he's out. Yeah, he's, he's like just see out. you later. <laughs> Jenny runs after him, tells he totally him he's dreaming. just leaves her too. Like yeah, he right. leaves his wife. Like behind, he just girlfriend. Take, I think at the time, yeah. Oh, a girlfriend, and takes off down the elevator. He could Tyler Durden could go back and pour acid on her, but he <laughs> right? just Mike nope. takes off. <laughs> not not concerned. Jenny follows after him, goes down the hallway. You know, hey, wake up, wake up, yeah. wake up. So after this incident, do you think Mike went to the doctor? Oh, shit, no, nope. <laughs> <laughs> he just kept reading his book. Damn, I thought Jenny was gonna do it. But he did find out this time there are 78 known sleep disorders. Really? So, man, we have we have topics for days. When I'm for about it we, for, for 78 more episodes. <laughs> but the one that sounded most familiar to what he had was REM behavior disorder, okay. which you covered back in episode 65. So if you want to hear more about REM behavior disorder, it was the episode called It's a Scoot-Filled Dream. <laughs> so you might want to check that out. See, look what your research did. You could say shit like that. Yeah. I know. I love um, it. So Mike's like, yeah, that sounds familiar. But, you know, mm. it made sense. But if you don't know what REM behavior disorder is, it's also called RBD. It Dopamine's a chemical released in your body when you fall asleep that paralyzes you so you don't act what's happening in your dream. Mm -hmm. People who have this disorder, the chemicals aren't really working, and so you act out what you're dreaming. Right. So... After he kept reading about this, he saw that, you know, sometimes people with this disorder kill their partners in bed. And he's like, oh, that doesn't sound good. So did he see a doctor? Fuck, please, yes. Nope. Oh, no. Mike. So. This is really bad, Mike. <laughs> don't worry. Jenny's okay. But <laughs> we get to January of 2005 and Mike's in Walla Walla, Washington. And he's staying at a lovely La Quinta. Oh, La lovely. Quinta Inn. I've stayed there. Actually, Mark's staying at a La Quinta this weekend. Fancy. Fancy. So he's going to bed. He, you know, he's eating pizza. He says, I'm watching the news. I'm Googling myself. Mmm, fun. <laughs> and he falls asleep pretty late. Okay. 
Mike falls asleep after belly full of pizza. Let me tell you this dream in Mike's words. Okay. I have a dream there's a guided missile headed towards my hotel room. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. There are all these military personnel in the room as well. I jump out of my bed and I say, what's the plan? (laughs) He's ready. The military people say, the missile coordinates are set specifically to you. Oh, shit. Damn it. So that's bad. That's really bad. Bad news, Mike. (laughs) So in order to save the platoon in my room, I need to jump out the window so the missile will detonate me on the outside. Okay, that's very nice and brave of him. But not only did I jump out the window in my dream, <gasps> I did so in real life. Out of the La Quinta? <laughs> out of the La Quinta. Oh my God. Oh my God. What floor was he on? Well, that's what he goes on to say. Two important details. One, I was on the second floor. Oh my and two, God. the window was closed. What? So just like the Hulk, I burst through the window. Like the glass? He busted through the glass? Yes. <laughs> and fell from the second floor? Oh he my says, God. <laughs> this is January, by the way. Oh, I no. I jumped through the window like the Hulk. And that's what I would have to tell the medical staff later in the ER. Oh, my but God. <laughs> as he's splattered on the lawn of La Quinta, he's still afraid. He still stands up. He starts running away from the missile. <laughs> oh, my God. So I'm he's slowly... obviously not hurt too badly if he gets up and runs. Yeah. <laughs> I'm slowly coming to the realization I'm on the front lawn of La Quinta in Walla Walla, Washington in my underwear, <laughs> bleeding. I was going to say probably bleeding like a mofo. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, but no. at the moment, all I can think is I'm so relieved I haven't been hit by the missile yet. That would have been a disaster. At least I'm still in the game. <laughs> oh, good. Keeping it positive. (laughs) So it's three o'clock in the morning when he starts really realizing what had happened. He walks back into the hotel at La Quinta. Has nobody heard this commotion? A window breaking and a man falling? (laughs) Can you imagine? Can you imagine? It's so scary. I mean, I know it's late, but guests or at least front desk staff should have heard something. Well, he gets to the front desk and (laughs) it seems like the phone is just like ringing off the hook. The front desk, you know, guys answer these calls. They're saying a man jumped out of a window. He's like, hello? To the night clerk, like, it's it's me. It's me. Hi. That's me, I'm, the man. I'm the one. Um, he says, he's like, I'm not sure if the night clerk had a, a learning disability or was just like out of it. So Mike tries to get his attention. He says, I'm staying at the hotel. I just had an incident. I jumped out of my window <laughs> and I need to go to the hospital. And the night clerk just goes, all right. <laughs> he was just not helpful, I guess. That's it? Like, does um, it call 911 or anything? Nope. Just so says- he just drives himself to the hospital at this point. Wait, he... <laughs> wait, wait. So he walked back up to the room to get his car get keys. His keys. And it's, Probably, did he put yeah. some mm-hmm. clothes on? <laughs> I would hope so. I would hope he did at least put a robe on. The this La Quinta is- robe. <laughs> the one they leave you. Yes. It's not the double tree. But. No. So he drives himself to the hospital. He has to explain to everyone what's happening. And, like, you know, he's, like, explain himself to, like, the registration person. He had to re- explain himself to the nurse. And, and the they doctor. probably he's like, think he's having a psychotic break. Right. Right. <laughs> and he kind of comes, he's sitting in this hospital bed, and he realized his, you know, clothes had been cut open, so he must have put on some pants at least. Okay. <laughs> Glass shards were coming out of his legs, and he was in the most pain he'd ever felt. Well... Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I think. Yeah. Yeah. The doctor even said that one of those pieces of glass was right by his femoral artery. So the doc's like, you should have been dead. Wow. He had 33 stitches put in his legs. Oof. How did a few short of... I just just don't understand this hotel employee. (laughs) And like, I think, you know, he was trying to be careful. He's like, I don't know if there's something wrong with him. And then maybe. Right. But like, but then you reach not, over the counter and grab the phone nine and call 911. You don't drive walk yourself. up to your room, grab your keys and drive yourself, especially when you could have hit your femoral artery and bled right. to death. You could have like cracked a rib. You don't know what's going on no. internally. That's awful. Awful. That's terrible. So after his 33 stitches, he went back to the hotel, packed up, and flew back home to New York. Do you think he saw a doctor now? No. He did. He finally (laughs) saw a doctor. 
Jenny's like, okay, this is it. Put my foot down. You're going to go see a doctor. Oh, my God. So now these days, Mike takes medication for his sleep disorder. He actually sleeps in a sleeping bag that goes all the way up to his neck. And he wears mittens. So he can't unzip this, like, body bag when Wait, he sleeps. Wait, it's like what babies wear. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know how they have their hands, little That's hands exactly covered what it, yep. up? And- <laughs> Wait, the medication doesn't help him? Like he has to I think it's kind of like a combo deal. Yeah. Take both as a precaution. God, that's so scary. Chumping out of a window? A closed yeah. window. That is insane. I mean, that's insane. Oh my God. Oh my God. Going back to where we were earlier, so he created this one man show yes. on Off Broadway. And then in 2012. He premiered a movie called Sleepwalk With Me at the Sundance Film Festival about his experience. It's, um, I've seen a trailer. It's, it looks like a romantic comedy. Okay. And it actually won an award, the next NEXT audience award at the Sundance Festival. Mm. He uh, directed so it and wrote it. familiar to me. One last thing I want to mention is as of 2022... He was working with the Michael J. Fox Foundation mm. on one of their landmark studies about REM behavior disorder and Parkinson's disease. Cool. And if you don't know about this, there's a study that's tending to find people with RBD have an early signs of Parkinson's disease. Yeah, I think we talked about that a little yeah. bit, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. that I mean, episode. Isn't that crazy, though? Like, it can be years and years, years later that you mm-hmm. get Parkinson's, but mm-hmm. that's scary. Yeah, so um, so just to finish up, I'm glad he was able to take his experience and kind of his celebrity status to be able to bring some awareness to this foundation. Yes. I'm going to put his information in the show notes, his website. He's he's a comedian, so he's doing tours right now in, like, London. And Phil- I'd love to see if he was by us because I'm like, I would totally love to go in That would be fun. Like, yes. But it doesn't yeah. look like he's coming anywhere in the Midwest, but if you're in Philadelphia, Rhode Island, New York, New Jersey, check him out. He also has a podcast. It's called... Mike Berbigula's Working It Out. So you might want to check that out and check out his podcast. But talk about a rabbit hole. I, I can't like, imagine what your brain was going through that night when you fell into that Oh, my that God. I was just, I was like, oh, I'll just go through a bunch of celebrities. And then I started research. I just got stuck on this one. I started researching it. And I was like, now I've got to watch this film. Right? Let's. Did you watch it? I have not. No. We should watch it together. Sleepover. Our next sleepover. Maybe we'll watch it. We can put our live reactions on the Sleepover Squad. That'd be fun to do. Yes, I love this idea. Thanks, Mindy. That was awesome. Hashtag. Oh, this has to be the hashtag. Okay. What does Mike Berbigula Berbigula dream? dream. Yes. (laughs) Because, I mean, we know some of his dreams, but honestly... I, we need to have a talk more. with him. We need, we need more. To, we need more because it. I'm wondering, does he still having dreams and not acting them out? Is yeah. he still a very vivid dreamer? Just hopefully the medication is not making him, you know, jump out of windows. Has he <laughs> broken floor. out of his onesie and sleeping bag? And I don't know. Had a, we, we fell off the wagon. <laughs> we need a part two. We need a part two, Mike. Mike um, please. So let us know. Thank you. Good stuff. Jesus Christ. Chitty chat chat. Miss Mindy Lee. <laughs> oh, no. Now everyone knows my middle name. Uh-oh. Am I in trouble? Mindy Lee. What does your and internal it- voice sound like? <laughs> does it ever scold you Mindy in- Lee. with your middle name <laughs> when you know you're in big trouble? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <it> yeah. <laughs> and it's spelled L-E-I-G-H, just it so is everyone knows. Beautiful. Love Thank it you. that way. <laughs> Good job, parents. Um, week was good. Uh, I, I did have something funny that happened. And there's always something, right? Yes. Um, by yes. The, oh, first, our vehicular homicide of animal is um, plus two this week. Um, Indeed. I'm sorry to say. It's manslaughter. It's manslaughter. It was a, um, a bird, and my oldest twin hit a deer. Oh, no. Is she okay? She's fine. Yeah. She, I think she is scared, of course, yeah. when it happened, because that's just, whew, yeah, unexpected. Oh, God. Um, deer, not so good. No. Uh, car still drives, so that's good. Aww. But yeah. Well, you I'm know. glad she's okay. I must have been really terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. And the, wor- the worst part was that her twin sister was a like a minute behind her with her friend. And so they came up on <gasps> the accident. So oh, they were like, no, what happened? Freaking yeah, so, out. Yeah. Oh, oh, God. They're okay. They're good. But I mean, I mean you see here. your sisters like yeah. 
car pulled over and you're like, what is going well, the good, on? Yeah. So it did push the deer pushed her into the other lane. And luckily that I mean, thank God there was no other traffic coming in the opposite direction. So very grateful. Very yeah. grateful for that. Yeah. God gave her a bag of fruit that day. <laughs> God gave her a deer <laughs> and oh, a bag of fruit. And a bag of fruit. <laughs> Good. But no, this week I was doing running some errands. Mark had somewhere to be, so I you know ran to the grocery store to pick up some things, and then I ordered some dinner for takeout because I'm like I'm home by myself. I'm gonna get something good. Good. Um, so I ordered it online. When so after the grocery store, I went to go pick up my food, and it was funny because I was waiting to pick up my food, and I prepaid i'm like oh i didn't bring my wallet in but i'm like oh die i prepaid for everything so it's all good get back to my car i'm driving and i get a phone call from a number that i don't recognize and i usually let them go to voicemail i'm usually not one to answer no i'm never one that i don't no no but it was an 847 number and then it kind of clicked like oh wait i didn't where's my wallet and so i was like oh shoot did i did i bring it into like the restaurant and like leave it on the counter yeah so i pick up the call and it's um, some gentleman that goes, hi, um, this is Josh. I found your wallet at the grocery store in the shopping cart. <laughs> what are you found in the cart? <laughs> I must have put my groceries away and then never, like, I didn't bring my whole person. I just brought my wallet in because there's only, oh like, a couple things I need to grab. God. I had it sitting, like, kind of, like, where you put your purse and what I just put it away. Samaritan. I know, right? Oh. And so he goes, I just tried to drive by your house because... I, your my address is on the license. Right, but okay. Right. I, I know where you're going with this. What are you gonna say? It makes me a little nervous, like a stranger. Right. I mean yeah. he's doing the right thing, but like maybe like, okay, can you leave it? You'd leave it at the grocery store. Or me, store, right? I'd be like, I'll be right there so you're in a public place or right. something, maybe throw them and normally twenty bucks I mean, or something. If I found something, I would put it in I would put it Lost and in found. the store. In the store. I would give it to the store. I'd be like, I found this. No. I wouldn't. So I thought it was weird. How? He's, he's like, uh, yeah, if you, I can drop it off. I'm like, oh, I'll come pick it up. Yeah. Like, let, you, let me know where you live. Because I thought it was weird too. Um, so he's like, oh, I'm actually in this neighborhood. I'm like, oh, it's like the next neighborhood over from me. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, great. I'll swing by and get it. He gives me his address. And here's the embarrassing part. So I pull up and I go into this driveway. I don't like that you went there by yourself either. That's the I mean, same as, daylight. That was same as him coming to your house. What did you're this right? Solve? I know. <laughs> well, I guess he did say like my. Oh, I'm calling you for my daughter's phone. Okay, I don't know. For some okay. reason, what you're a, right. Okay. I, I'm my true crime. I should have maybe been more careful. Your awareness um, was not at top. Peak. <laughs> not that week. Not that day. <laughs> so I pull in. I knock on the door. No one answers. I knock on the door again. I'm like, okay, well, that's weird. And then. <laughs> course my dyslexia got me and i was across the street because i flipped some numbers around and all of a sudden i see him like i'm calling him and the phone's ringing behind me and i was like oh my, God. my bad no, i'm at the wrong house <laughs> at least no so one now, answered <laughs> could you imagine like can i have my wallet and they're like ma'am i don't know excuse who you are. me <laughs> so i kind of like back out and go in his driveway and like i see his daughter is like there and i'm like okay so i wasn't that creepy. Right. But I grabbed my wallet. And I'm like, oh, you know, thank you so much. You know, thanks for being honest. And I'm like, I'm sorry. I might have scared your neighbor. <laughs> He's like, that's oh, okay. She's just pregnant. She never answers the door anyways. I'm like, okay, cool. Um, <laughs> it's a lot of good chit chat here. So okay, I, cool. I go leave. I got my wallet. And he goes, oh, by the way, you have a really good security dog. And I go, oh, thanks. Because he's like, well, as soon as I walked up, that dog was just barking his head off. And, you know, that, that's great. So that's he good. did go to your house? He did. He, I wasn't home yet. So he had gone to my house, tried to drop it off. Kingston's like not having it. And so he took it with him, which would also wouldn't you just like leave it on the porch? Well, but, what uh, if you got the wrong address or like Mindy Just leave did. it at the store. <laughs> yeah. just leave I'm it saying at the store. like, don't be yeah. running to strangers' houses anymore. Say, I found this in a cart. Yeah. Turn it into yeah. customer service. So I get home and I'm like, okay, oh, that was weird. You know, I'm like, I should have noticed that. Silly me. And I eating my my takeout, which is delicious, by the way. <laughs> Open my bottle wait, of wait, wine. What did my... you get? Oh, risotto. Oh, like, yeah. Chicken risotto. Oh, so good. And a okay. nice bottle of rosé. Mm. Um, just enjoying life. And then it hits me. How the fuck did he get my phone number? What an excellent question. <laughs> I, I, wait, you still like... don't have an answer? No. Because he's got, obviously, my driver's license has my phone number on it. Or has my address, address on it. Yeah, it does have a phone but number. But nothing in my wallet would have had my phone number on it. You don't can't Google my phone number and find out where someone lives usually. 
This or, is... you know, put the address in and find a phone number. That usually doesn't work. Mm. And so I'm like, well, now I'm like a little creeped out. I'm totally fucking creeped but out. I'm... Now, the only thing I can think of is perhaps he's a cop. And Mindy, you know I mean, don't you think that would have been brought up in conversation? You're talking Perhaps. about that pregnant lady across the street, but he's not like, hey, I'm a police officer. Um, you know, I found this. You know, it's cool. Blah, I don't blah, know blah. how else he would have. I don't know. Mindy, I'm scared because he also went to, to he also went to your house and talked yes. about your guard dog. So that's what made me th- think that maybe he was like a cop. Like, oh, your house is secure. You know, I... you felt comfortable taking it with him and not leaving at the store. I don't know. That's. I don't think that's about comfort. That's creepy. Like, it's almost I'm, like, because most people would leave it at the store. Right, yeah. So the fact that he made a personal trip, like, looked at your ID, your address, drove out there, noticed you had a protective dog, made a comment about it, which means, like, I don't know. To me, it sounded like, <laughs> yeah, he's protective, but I know, mm-hmm. I know your house. Well, thanks for Using I'm, my mind, darling. No, I don't. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm still to, alive. <laughs> I know, but it makes me scared. And then the, that he, the phone number thing, how? Yeah. I don't know. Mm. I, that's my story. I got nothing. <laughs> I, got I got nothing. my wallet back. Everything was in it. So, I mean, maybe he could be a murderer, but he's not a thief. I guess that's one way to look at it. <laughs> but if you're dead, you don't need mm. money anyway. <laughs> True. Excellent point. Um, well, I'm glad you're okay. I'm glad your daughters your are week? okay. Yeah. I My week has been boring, boring, boring. Just not. Oh, what? my. Um, I told you how I was having problems with my garbage disposal, right? This is such exciting stuff. Oh, yeah. You stuff. texted me that you were having problems. With- anyway, basically, like, it wouldn't drain and all the stuff was coming up and it smelled really bad, you know? Oh, it was yeah. Just that's like, like everything. And then. I opened my dishwasher to unload the dishes and it was just like standing water in there. So Ew, yeah, it yeah. smelled even worse. And so I called the management company and they sent someone out right away and they like That's good. Got it fixed, blah, blah, blah. And then this week doesn't work again. I'm what? like the disposal. Oh, does, they just they just fixed it. They didn't like replace it. They didn't replace it. it. Yeah, it so, needs to be replaced. So the dishwasher is fine. But and he like unscrewed to see if there was any pipes, like any clogs in him, or nothing. So he just like jimmied the disposal again. And I was like, that's what he the guy did last time. And yeah. he said it would be fine for a really long time. I'm like, it's yeah. been like a week. And he's like, yeah, well, just call us Thanks. if it happens again. I'm like, oh, okay. I can I can shake it. I can just shake it fine. Like, yeah, I don't like, need you to come out there I, and do that. No, it's not working. No, replace it. Mm-hmm. Like, replace yep. okay. it. So well, Brooke's got to do that this week and raise some hell. That's my exciting week. <laughs> oh, well, at shit. least you're not going to get murdered. I hope not. Uh, <laughs> don't put that juju on me. <laughs> well, don't fall down a plywood, a creepy plywood thing into a kitchen either. I won't. I'm going okay. to. Or don't tr- b- jump out a window. I won't do that either. I promise. Okay. But other than that, my week spin is pretty adulting and not, Yay. you know. <laughs> all right bestie that wraps up a week i hope you have a good week i hope you don't get murdered uh, hey bestie do us one favor and that's to tell the one of your best friends about the show or a complete stranger you can tell the kind samaritan that might murder you later this week about the podcast i mean i did have some stickers in there so maybe he did see it maybe. but he still wouldn't know your phone number i know you can tell your thieving <laughs> no good gangster grandma about the podcast <laughs> You can tell your favorite fruit stand delivery worker, fruit stand from God <laughs> worker about the podcast. Fruit stand from God. Uh, that's how we grow. I mean, you can tell God about the podcast, but I don't know if he's got headphones. <laughs> that's how we grow, best friend. And that's how we continue to do this each week. So just tell one person. That's the best thing you can do for us. We appreciate you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And thank you again to Sarah for her crazy wild ride she took us on with her witches and whatnot. That was bananas. Yeah, that was a good one. <laughs> that was a good one. And also for all our catnap submissions, we have a great time with catnaps always. We like to always. hear as many as possible, and they're always fun. All right. Well, have fun with your garbage disposal. <laughs> I'm going to go witness a lot of love this weekend. And until next week, bestie. Sweet dreams, bitches.